Hi class, how is everyone doing today? I hope you're having a great day. I'm excited because today we are going to be learning how to tell time. But before we get started, I need everyone to make sure they have a pencil, some paper, their clock handout they got in class today, and some crayons or colored pencils. So if you don't have these, pause the video to go grab them and then come back when you're ready. I want everyone to write down notes as we follow along and then write down any questions or thoughts you have about time. And we are going to go over this in class tomorrow. So for today, we're gonna watch this lecture, take notes, we're gonna color our clock handout, and then you are going to go and do your Google form quiz so I know that you guys have watched this video and you have been practicing telling time. So today we're gonna start by thinking about what we already know about time. Well, we know that there is a morning time, a daytime, and a nighttime every day. We know this because the sun comes up in the morning, the sun stays up all day long, and then the sun goes down at night. But what if we want to get more specific about time? Well, there are 24 hours in one day. There are 60 minutes in one hour and 60 seconds in one minute. We can also divide the day up into two 12 hour periods. So the first 12 hours of the day, we call this the AM. And the second 12 hours of the day, we call this the PM. We use clocks to keep track of all of this time. Clocks tell us the exact hour and minute of the day. And some clocks tell us about the seconds too. I bet you have seen a bunch of clocks already today. Can you think of some? Write down somewhere that you know you've seen clocks today. I bet you can think of a lot. I thought about in the class, we have the clock on the wall alarm clocks, watches, computers, cell phones, and cars all have clocks. Now, there are two main types of clocks that we see every day. The first is digital clocks, and the second is analog clocks. Now, both of these clocks read that it is two o'clock, but they look very different. How can we tell how to read the clock? Well, we're gonna go over that today. As we see this digital clock has numbers and this analog clock has numbers, dashes, and three arrow hands. We're gonna learn what all of this means. So let's start with the digital clock. We read this left to right. First, this first set of numbers, are the hour. <clears throat> then we have a colon sign. The second set of numbers are the minutes. And then we have AM or PM. And this tells us what part of the day we're in. Are we in the first half or the second half? So we have hours, minutes, and the time of day. The colon divides the hours and the minutes, but we don't use it when we read the time. So when we're using a digital clock, let's say that it is 12 a.m., the beginning of a new day. One hour passes, the hour will go up to one. After another hour passes, the hour will go up to two. After another hour passes, we add one hour to the clock. That makes it three. We keep going. We have hour four, hour five, hour six, hour seven, hour eight, hour nine, hour 10, hour 11. And then we start at hour 12 again for the second part of the day. Then we move on to minutes. Minutes, we can tell have, there are 60 minutes in one hour. 
So the minutes tell us how long we have been in the hour. So we start at zero minutes. When we add a minute, it goes up one minute. When another minute passes, it goes up to two minutes. When another minute passes, it goes up to three minutes, then four, then five, and the minutes go all the way up to 59 because there are 60 hours in, or there are 60 minutes in one hour. But the clock doesn't say 60 minutes because once you hit 60 minutes, the clock goes up to the next hour. And when you have zero minutes, we read this as o'clock. So if we have 12 hours and 59 minutes and one minute passes, it will go to one o'clock. Let's try it with this. We have 7.59 a.m. One minute passes. Can you guess what the time is gonna go up to? That's right, 8 o'clock a.m. Good job. Let's read some examples. This reads 3.15 a.m. Next, this reads 7.32 p.m. Next, we have 11.56 p.m. Now, when we try and read the analog clock, there are a lot of things that we see. I see three arrow hands, the numbers one through 12, and a bunch of dashes. Now, there are exactly 60 dashes. Each dash counts for one minute because there are 60 minutes in one hour. So, first we look at the arrow hands. We have the small arrow hand. That one we use to read the hour. Then we have the big arrow hand, and that one we use to read the minute. Then we have this tiny thin arrow hand, and we use that to read seconds. Then we're gonna look at these numbers. These numbers are shown for the hour. So we have hour 12, hour one, hour two, hour three, hour four, hour five, hour six, hour seven, hour eight, hour nine, hour 10, hour 11, and then we start again at hour 12. All of these dashes count as one minute. And we use the big arrow hand to see what minute we are on. We also have these dashes that are just thicker than the other dashes. These we count by five. So it would be five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, 35 minutes, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, 55 minutes. And then when we get to 12, that is 60 minutes and we start all over at zero. This clock just shows you how the arrow hands move around the clock. They go clockwise. So they start at the top and move left or they move right and then they go all the way around. The second hand is moving the fastest. That's because seconds go by the fastest. And then the minute hand. The minute hand moves one minute for every 60 seconds. And the hour hand will move one hour for every 60 minutes. Now let's go over some examples. Here we have a clock. We're going to look at the hour hand first. This hour hand is pointing to the 10. So we know we are in hour 10. Then we look at the long hand and that is pointing to the two. If we read every dash, we can count them up to 10 dashes. That means we are at 10 minutes. So how do we read that? 
we would read it as 10, 10. Let's go to the next example. Here we have a clock. The arrow hand is pointing right after the two. That means that we are in the second hour. And then the minute hand or the long hand is pointing at the four. We can count those dashes or we can go by, we can count by five. The minute hand is at 20 minutes. So we know we're in the second hour at 20 minutes. And we would read that as 220. Let's see if you guys can read this one on your own. Did you read 615? If you did, good job. That's exactly what it is. Now here we have three analog clocks on the left side and three and three digital clocks on the right side. One digital clock will have the same number or the same time as one of one analog clock will have the same time as one digital clock. Let's see if we can match them up to the same time. Let's start by reading the first analog clock that's in the left upper corner. That reads 350. Do we have a digital clock that reads 350? I think we do. Let's draw a line to match them. Now let's move on to the second analog clock. The hour is pointed at the five. So we know the hour is five. The minute hand is pointed at 12. Now that means that it's at zero minutes. So we would read that as five o'clock. Do we have a digital clock that says five o'clock? I think we do, let's draw a line. Now the last clock, the last digital, or the last analog clock has is pointing, the hour hand is pointing in between the 12 and the one. That means that it's one o'clock or the first hour. The minute is pointed at the nine. We can count by fives to get 45. That means it is 1245. Do we have a digital clock that reads 1245? Yes, we do. Let's draw a line. Perfect. Now we are going to get our clock handouts. And when we're done with this video, we're going to color our clock handouts and then go take the Google quiz. Now, the clock handout we are going to use tomorrow in class, we're gonna make your very own clock and then we are going to use it to practice telling time. And then we are going to play a game that is related to time and we will use our clocks that we have made. So before class tomorrow, don't forget, do your Google form and make sure you bring your notes, your questions, and your clock handout to class with you tomorrow. You guys did a great job today and I'm so excited to see you in class. Have a good day, bye.